Yeah, it was. It, it, I found it extremely challenging, actually, and especially because I look a lot younger than my age. So I'm 42 now, and so back then, I was late 20s, early 30s. So um, looked even younger, and so it. And it was. I, you know, looking back now, it's totally my own perception as well. I would always come into a boardroom with the perception that they're going to think that I look really young and that I'm 12 mm. and that I've got nothing to say. So I always felt like I had to prove myself in the first few sentences. Absolutely. Because I think energetically, if you're hiding all of that stuff and pretending like it's not there, people can tell anyway. And it mm. just, it comes out in either anger or frustration or like it, you know, it's there anyway. The elephant in the room is there. Exactly. So I think if, if we get used to expressing it more, like that's how we connect. Like if we're, if we're vulnerable and share what's going for us in the moment, connection happens and then you get an outcome that's best for both people or both organisations. So. I didn't want to become a mum and then go back into a really senior role in that way because, the, you know, the expectations and the responsibilities that you have... Um, as a leader in, in that type of role are uh, high. And yeah, I just, I felt like I wanted to be present as a mum and to be able to um, be at home. And th there was that whole, like, again, it's probably just a perception thing, but my perception was that if I had a child in that sort of role that I'd have to go back, be back at work sort of within three to six months full time and have my child in care. Mm -hmm. The um, day that he passed away, the morning that he passed away, I was sitting there with him and I was just, I was playing his favorite songs and I was just in this real connected space with him. And I was basically praying for him to get the most magical angel wings, like, and have like an extra amount of bliss given to him for all the suffering that he had had in his life. I was just like, you know, please just like make him so free and just so full of bliss when he goes and it was, it was really painful and um I was finding it hard to even get out of bed in the morning and and all that awful awful stuff but what it gave me was one an appreciation for for health and thriving health because I've been taking it for granted for most of my life um and so now I'm sort of I'm sort of 80 percent better and just like so grateful for, for not having that pain in my body mostly mm. anymore still a little bit there um just to be in that warmer climate and I'm getting up at four o'clock in the morning going to the beach doing meditation and walking and swimming and yeah like I've, I've actually tried to go from being a night owl to a morning person for decades I've been trying to do it for so long without success and for some reason here up on the sunny coast <laughs> It's so much easier. I don't know. Nice. Like everybody's up earlier and yeah, it's, it's made a huge difference. Yeah. For a long time I have hidden the fact that, well, I'm this professional person. I'm this lawyer, like I'm supposed to have my shit together and I can't share it. Like you just don't do that. You just get on with it and you hold it all in. And that's what I've done for many years. And I've fought a bit of a slow learner. I finally <laughs> realized that it's, <laughs> that's not good for me and it's not good for anyone. You know, if, if, someone who appears to have all this success in life and appears to have their shit together, doesn't have their shit together, then that gives permission for other people to go, actually, it's okay. Like you don't, I, I'm not broken. I don't need fixing. I'm mm. just a human being like everybody else.